Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories. Let's start with the story. A I T A for not paying my roommate's faker bill? I'm 21 F and live with three roommates, Mary, Kate, and Gwen. I make special brownies for my friends and stash them in my room, wrapped in foil and hidden in a bag. Last weekend I was out of town, and Mary was taking care of my cat while I was gone. Around 11 p.m. on Saturday, Kate called me, crying her eyes out, saying Mary was in the hospital. Gwen wasn't home yet, so she didn't find out until later. Kate told me Mary had found my brownies, helped herself to one, and then felt all woozy and out of it. She convinced Kate to drive her to the hospital. I told Kate that Mary had probably eaten a brownie with about 150 milligrams of something, and that she'd be fine. Just needed to rest, drink water, and maybe have some snacks. I wasn't too worried, it'd pass. I got home Sunday night to find Mary absolutely livid. She's blaming me for her, her visit and demanding that I cover her $3,000 in hospital bill because they ran a bunch of tests and stuff. I'm seriously torn. I don't think I should have to pay for her hospital bill because I kept the brownies in my private space, not in a shared area. But Kate's on Mary's side, saying I should take responsibility. Gwen agrees with me but is staying out of it. So, would I be the asshole if I didn't pay Mary's hospital bill? I just feel like I'm being unfairly blamed here. Thank you. Edit, my roommates and I live in a legal state. I also do not bake the brownies in our apartment, so they probably didn't know I had them. I will be talking to them tonight over dinner. I'll be talking to my landlord about breaking the lease early, but ultimately I'm stuck until I can find another place to live. I have four missed calls from Gwen and a text saying we need to talk in person, but we won't both be home for another three hours. She's currently home, but I have classes. Gwen texted me again and told me I need to come home right now, so I'm skipping my last class. I'll let you guys know about whatever this is. Gwen texted me and told me to come home ASAP because we needed to talk in person. Basically, there was no her trip. I'm more well-off than my roommates, I'm fortunate enough for my parents to pay for my college and rent as long as I keep a 3.5 GPA, and they equated that to me having money to burn I suppose. Apparently, Gwen was home, in her room, while both Mary and Kate were also home. Mary and Kate were in the living room talking and Gwen overheard them and recorded their conversation. Unfortunately I can't share it with you as I'm in a two-party consent state and I'm not trying to get a real lawsuit, but Gwen's story was confirmed via the recording. Mary has been hanging out with some frat guys and apparently picked up sports betting. She managed to lose around $2,000 and threw her betting. You guys were also correct in claiming she might have found my brownies when feeding my cat previously. Apparently she had found them, opened them, smelled them, and knew what they were. Together her and Kate hatched a plan to pretend to get sick from my brownies and go to the air and then convince me to foot the bill, since they know I don't like confrontation, and figured I would just do it to avoid trouble. They decided on $3,000 and so Mary could cover her debts and so Kate could get a cut for helping with her acting skills, calling me on the phone crying. I was fuming after hearing the recording. I immediately went to my room to make sure everything was there, and as far as I could tell everything was in its place, except for a gold and emerald necklace. This necklace isn't worth a ton, like $125 and, but it's from my deceased grandmother and means a lot to me. I'm not necessarily proud of this and you guys may not agree, but I went into Mary's room because I figured she had taken it to sell to cover her debts. Lo and behold it was hanging in her jewelry box. I thank Gwen for showing me the recording and her, my boyfriend, and I are packing my stuff as I type this update. I'm getting a storage unit and staying with my boyfriend until I can find another apartment, his roommates are okay with it given the situation, but it can't be long term as pets are against their lease. After I pack and move my stuff, I'm going to contact the landlord to see if they'll waive the lease breaking fee given the circumstances. Mary and Kate are already blocked. So yeah, not how I expected today to go, but at least I won't have to go to court or pay a fake $3,000 in her bill. Thank you guys for your advice. AITA for unintentionally making a family homeless? I feel really had about this and conflicted and could really use some perspective. I hope we can keep things civil here. So, I had this house down south. It wasn't anything fancy, just a cozy three-bedroom with a nice little garden. But the location was awesome, semi-rural with great connections to the city. Perfect for raising kids. I put it on the market for around $400,000 and... We got a ton of interest right from the start, and had to start meeting potential buyers to pick the right one. We met this couple who seemed perfect. They got two little ones and were super excited about the idea of moving in. 
Their kids had friends in the area, their parents were close by for babysitting, and they had a solid circle of friends nearby. We decided to go with them, and even agreed to sell for $10,000 and more than asking. We kicked off the legal stuff with the lawyers but hadn't wrapped things up yet. Then we received last minute an offer we literally could not refuse. These people are two men from the city, looking to escape it for a quiet life. They have money, seem to come from money. They offer us a boatload of money cash. Our estate agent told us they wouldn't normally pass it on given, we'd accepted an offer. But this was too good to pass up. We contemplate, and we accept. Immediately after, we personally call the other buyers to explain that we are pulling out. They are of course devastated. We understand. We feel really bad, but we cannot turn this kind of money away. For us, it's a life-changing amount. We offer to pay any legal fees they've incurred to this point. They hung up on us, which sucked, but we understood. Some of our neighbors starts acting strangely. They won't say hello when they used to. Turns out the new couple have been spreading rumors about us. That we were nasty horrible, money-hungry people. With the current economic crisis, the bank withdrew their mortgage offer. Their landlord has already rented out their property and they have to move out. They're strictly homeless though they're moving in with their parents while they figure something out. Of course, I feel awful. But I can't turn this money down, and the new buyers are paying to expedite completion. I'm not in the habit of explaining myself, so I simply tell people who ask that it's complicated, and it was never our intention to make them homeless, even though they will have a roof. In the local Facebook group, my husband and I were attacked by an anonymous poster who ranted about how awful we were and money-hungry capitalists ruining a young couple's prospects. We weren't named, but if you knew anything about the situation, you'd know it was about us. We tried our best to soften the blow. We were to know that the economy would tank and they'd be left stranded, and we have to put our family and our needs first. I still can't help question if we are the assholes here. I've seen a lot of comments about not keeping my word, and it reminds me of my O-level study of Antony and Cleopatra, Antony, my word is my honor, and if I lose my honor I lose myself. Always loved that play. I don't explain myself because it's not their business. I've chosen an anonymous site for a reason. People are free to judge, but most are lying when they say they'd walk away from an offer 50% over asking. It doesn't reflect poorly on me to say that to adults with financial responsibilities and families of this I am now sure. This has opened many doors for us. We no longer have to take a mortgage on our new house. We get to live in our dream location for the rest of our years and leave our children, and hopefully grandchildren, something to set them up for life. We've bought a lovely house nearer to our kids, so we can see them more and be active in their lives. We can retire much sooner than we previously could have, and have no major debts hanging over our heads. I felt bad because these people were first-time buyers, and were enthusiastic about having a home in their community of choice. Upon reflection and, and reading some of these comments, I am content in our decision. They made a premature decision in handing in their notice, and they didn't do their due diligence on how buying a property works. They decided to say vicious things about us when we were courteous to them. I have not martyred myself at the expense of financial freedom and happiness for my family for people who turned out to be rather unkind. I'm more than okay with that. While it wasn't the intention of some of the commentators, they've helped realize that. If Reddit decides I'm the asshole, that's okay. I shall have to live with it. Thank you for your input. I think I'm going to go have a peaceful night for the first time in weeks since those whole debacles started. Thank you for listening to the whole story. Wishing you a wonderful day.